world music. So when we talk about world music, of course, we are talking about all the various different countries and instruments that pertain to the world. If you did not know, there are a total of 195 countries in the world. So one of the type of questions that may be on the exam is something like something along the lines of, well, what is the country of origin? So when they're talking about that, they want you to determine, and they're gonna give you, of course, four choices, because this is multiple choice. And they may have something like Kenya, Brazil, um, China, and Australia. Now, all of those countries are a distance away from each other. And the music that comes out of those countries are, are vastly different. Uh, they should be. It's different people, different cultures, different instruments, things of that sort. So it makes sense that you should be able to identify music from Australia versus music from Brazil, because they shouldn't sound anything alike. Next slide. So for example, Cuba versus Jamaica. Now both of these, they're really close to each other as far as geographical um, environments, locations. But if you've heard Cuban music and you've heard Jamaican music, it's a, it's, a, it's a difference between the two. You should be able to hear that this is definitely Cuban music versus Jamaican music. So you want to be able to, well one of the things you definitely want to do is listen to a variety of music from various, um, various countries around the world. Now we're not talking about listening to 195 countries, no. That's too much. That's not what we're covering in music. But what we are covering are some of those countries that, um, especially in your world music history portion of your class or the entire class, they have um, designated certain countries to be uh, very important. And those are the type of songs or pieces of music you want to listen to. So I'm just using Cuban music versus Jamaican music. If you do not know the difference, say that you've never heard this music before, and that's possible, I'm not just gonna assume that. Then listen to some um, Cuban music and, and then listen to some Jamaican music. And you will clearly hear a difference in the different type of rhythms that they're playing, uh, the different type of harmonic rhythms and, and sounds that they're using, even down to the melodic material. It changes and it's supposed to change because they're different, they're different cultures and different people in those cultures making it. So let's start off with the largest continent, which is Africa. And Africa is broken down into five regions. So here we have Central, East, North, South, and West. They have a total of 54 countries and um, it's not that the other countries were not important for me to list, it's just, it's a lot of them. So some of the countries that they may have music as representative on the exam would be maybe South Africa. You may have something from Ghana. You could have something from Tanzania or Kenya, or you could have something from the Congo. So whatever your music history or world music history professor has brought to your attention, say, you know, in some of your uh, books, your world history books, is um, these are some important countries that we're gonna be studying this semester. Well, those are the type of countries you want to study. You want to listen to that music and then be able to identify not only the people singing, but also the instruments that they're playing. So here, well, I have just have an illustration of, you know, how it's broken down as far as the regions are concerned. These are a lot of countries in here, and the music is different in each country. So we're not going to make the assumption that all the music in the West is the same. It's not. That's just like make the, making the assumption that all the music in the South, uh, of, South of, of the United States is the same. Well, we clearly know that hip hop in Atlanta sounds totally different than hip hop in Dallas. That's if you know about hip hop. So the music is not gonna sound the exact same, but you can tell it's somewhat from the same region, but of course it's gonna have differences. So here are some of the instruments that you wanna know about, you wanna study them, and because uh, they're well known. And so let's start, start off with the djembe, which is um, from West Africa, uh, from Mali. And it's African hand drum, single skin, membr membrane of foam. And it has these attached ropes that are used on the side to tune the instrument. 
So if you do not know what it looks like, I want you to look up all of these instruments that I have selected here so you have a picture of them. The reason I do not have, of course, pictures of a lot of the instruments or even music um, as illustrations or um, references is because of a thing we talked about on an earlier video. If I have not discussed it already, uh, or if you have not seen that uh, video, is copyright. Copyright laws come into play, whereas just like I cannot use so much information in my classrooms as far as teaching, like um, using an entire piece as a reference when I have not purchased the things like that, um, or using certain books and things of the materials out of those books, it's the same thing. One of the reasons why our textbooks cost so much money is because the people who took that picture or made these recordings and things of that sort, they have to be paid. And so I just wanted to give you an overview. These are things that you can look up yourself. You can look up on YouTube or the internet or anything else to find these um, examples. Um, so I just want to just tell you ahead of time, I'm not going to have any sound examples or pictures because of the copyright laws. All right, so the next one would be the Embira, which is from East Africa. Um, one of the representative countries is Zimbabwe. And it's a thumb piano, which is held in the hand, and it had metal strips of different lengths. So you've probably seen it where they're, um, it, it's a wooden box in their hand, and they're ding, 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 ding. That's a thumb piano, because it has pitches. So that's what it's called, an Mambira, um, some people call it just a thumb piano. You just want to know um, the various names for it. So you can start off with that. The goblet drum is from Egypt. And it's an African hand drum. And then it's single skin membrane or bone as well. So these two are similar in um, the way they are shaped because they're, you know, or they're the way they're designed, which is a single skin membrane of bone. So you definitely want to look at both of them to see, well, what's the difference between the two? Well, one of them is, one is from West Africa and one is from Egypt. And as we know, Egypt is in the east, and in the far east, as far as um, Africa is concerned. And then the shakir, which is from East Africa, is a percussion instrument. It's a dried gourd. Um, okay. Yeah, you got to look up the gourd. It's like, yeah, it could be a pumpkin, something like that. And it's dried uh, with beads on the outside shell. So it has a, the shell has become hard, and they put these beads on the outside, and it's shaking to produce the sound. So you're seeing people like them. So if you've seen that, you go, oh yeah, I have seen somebody doing that type of motion. Of course, just look on YouTube. You'll see examples of each one of these. Of course, voices are the primary instruments of all um, countries because they sing our music. They represent the songs of our people and our culture. So the voices are the most prominent, not only in Africa, it's the most prominent around the world. But we clearly hear a lot of singing. They do a lot of singing for a variety of things. They do singing for, um, if it's a tribal type of environment, they may do singing for rain, or they do singing for the sun, or they do singing for the work that they're doing out in the fields of, of their crops. Whatever it is, a lot of them will use their voices in order to make the music and using of the rhythm of the music to help them to go get through the work, which is very, um, indicative of the music of, of enslaved people in America, whereas they use music in order to help them to stay on, um, keep a rhythm and keep some level of enjoyment, um, even if, even in bad times, just some level of feeling of, I'm having this um, uh, emotional moment with all my um, people out here, all my family. And so they're using their voices to sing together. They're using the rhythm to stay in rhythm in, um, in order to do their work. Uh, the Agogo is from West Africa. So it is one or two metal bells of different sizes. I love the Agogo. I wish I had one. Uh, two different pitches. One is high and low. And then they're attached together with a single curved metal. So you hear them go, ding, 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 ding. They're two metal, um, um, metal um, shapes that we actually play high and low pitches. And you'll see that the size of them, um, the size and the length of them, of course, dictate whether one is high and one is low. The balafon is from West Africa. It's a xylophone using different size gourds for the resonator. So if you think about like the marimba, we have the resonators under the bottom. Ours are usually some type of metal. 
Well, for them, they actually use the gourds. And the different sized gourds, as they're uh, playing on top of the xylophone, the different sized gourds, of course, we have small gourds, which will produce high pitches. And then, of course, the large gourds will do um, the lower pitches. And then shakers are from all around Africa and the Middle East. Um, different types, we use eggshells, um, even in our kindergarten classes. So that's one of the shakers we use. We use rain sticks. Um, you've seen a rain stick, but you know, you just go back and forth and it makes it sound like rain, so, and et cetera. Many different types of shakers uh, that not only are used in Africa, but of course around the world. So let's talk about the Americas. Sometimes I have a bad habit of saying um, in America, such and such and such and such, or in America. And I really need to be conscious of that because it, it doesn't represent just America, it represents the United, the United States. And we're just one of the northern countries that's represented. So let's look at it. So in Central America, we have like Belize and Guatemala and Panama. Um, in the north, we have Canada, the United States, Cuba. And then in the south, Brazil, Colombia, Argentina. So these are the Americas. So I need to make sure that I'm saying the United States. When I say here in America, I'm really saying here in the United States. And so as you can see here, the region, um, all the green represents the United States. Uh, this is also Canada, so we have north, and then we have Mexico, the central area, and then we have the southern region. So let's look at some of the instruments that are representative from these areas. Well, the guitar is in all areas, all the Americas. Um, it's originally from Spain, um, as we know the Spaniards came over. So it's a quarterphone, so it's designed to not only play melodic material, but also harmonic material, of course. Uh, it's made of wood, fretted string instrument, vibrating strings. We all know what a guitar is, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Charango is from Bolivia, or Charango, it's Charango. And it's a quarterphone as well, and hollow body lute. Uh, well, we know lutes. I remember lutes from um, the Renaissance period. You know what they look like. You can just re reference those in your music history books. Uh, they're fretted string instruments, and they have anywhere between four and five double strings. So make sure, to, again, look these things up online so you know what they look like. They're not going to give you a picture of an instrument. I've, I've never seen that. Um, but you, you still want to know what it looks like because that's a visual aid for you. You, you remember a charango, oh, it looks like that, and it's from uh, Bolivia. So if they say if it's a four or five double string instrument, and that's the only one as an option on the exam, then you'll notice that. Uh, the cuatro is from Colombia. And another fretted string instrument, four strings, hollow body, a viola shape um, instrument, and associated with the Spanish guitar. And then the maracas. Well, anybody who has been in music ed know what maracas are. So they are representative of all the Americas. And it's an idiophone. I'm saying things like idiophone, aerophone, membranophone. I am under the assumption that you remember those things. They're just classifications, of course, of um, different instruments. So an idiophone is part of the percussion family. It just doesn't make a pitch. All right. So um, it's a large rattle. It's also called a shaker. And then it's very common, of course, in Latin music. The ukulele, which is in Hawaii, uh, they have ukulele classes. I mean, there are some schools that's even, that offer ukulele classes. There are a lot of teachers who offer ukulele because it's a very small instrument. You can take it anywhere. You can go outside and play it on the lawn in front of your house. You can take it to the beach. Um, they play chords. I mean, it's, it's, it's a miniature size, I won't say a miniature size guitar. It's a fretted instrument like all the other ones we would just, um, just discussed. Um, but you can play chords on them. And um, it's small enough that it can almost fit in your backpack. So if you're a person who wants to just have music with them all the time and you want to have an acoustic instrument, of course, um, ukulele would be a great instrument for that. So. Fred a string instrument, a small guitar with four nylon strings, and it's a part of the lute family. The banjo is uh, from the United States. If we think about um, folk music, um, the Appalachian Mountains, things of that sort, you hear that type of music, 
banjo is going to definitely be a part of it. Uh, another Freddie string instrument, 45 um, strings, rounded body, within membrane over the frame, and then it's common in country and folk music. So if you don't remember what it looks like, it has a white um, shell on the outside, a white membrane of foam that's under the strings. Whereas we think about most guitars, we have, of course, a sound hole. Whereas the sound comes out of it, well, the, the banjo doesn't have that. It has a white uh, membrane of foam over the body. And so the, um, that is helping to resonate the sound. Oh, steel pans, I love steel pans. If you've been to any island, especially Caribbean island, uh, you will hear steel pans, especially like in Jamaica and Bahamas and things of that sort. Uh, these are percussion instruments. Um, they're made for oil, oil, oil drums and they're tuned chromatically. So you will see them there. They cut the top part of off and then they have these little um, sections where this this pitch is B, this pitch is G, and this pitch is oh, the turtle whatever. shell looking. Oh yeah, it look like a turtle shell. And they, it's very common in the um, Caribbean islands. And if you've ever seen, even if you've never been to an island, you've seen them in movies. You've seen any island mu music, I'm sorry, any island movie, you've seen steel pans. They've been playing them. Uh, what's interesting about it is they're used out of um, old oil drums. And so um, they had military um, back in the day on these islands. And when they left, they just left a, a lot of these oil drums there. And so what the natives did was, okay, we're going to use these. Uh, these can make some interesting sounds. And then they created all these steel pans from it. And then the dulcimer, which is... Um, we generally think of it with the Appalachian Mountains. And another Freddie string instrument it has three or four strings. It's played on the lap of the table or the table. I actually have a dulcimer at home, um, back home in Chicago. And it's sometimes referred to as an Appalachian dulcimer. So you definitely want to know these names as well, um, just in case you happen to see them on the exam. All right, let's look at Asia. Asia is broken into six different sections. So in Asia, we have a total of 48 countries. In the central region over here, we have countries like Afghanistan and um, Kazakhstan, things of that sort. In the east, we have China, Japan, and Korea. The north is Russia and Siberia. The south, Bangladesh, India, Maldives. Oh, I want to go there. Southeast, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand. And in the west, Iran, Iraq, Israel, so forth and so on. Now, if you just know anything about any of these countries, at least one from each different region, you know this music does not sound anything like it. It's, it's, you should be able to tell the difference between Chinese music and Iran music. It's, it's different. It's just different people, different cultures. You should be able to listen to the music and hear the different type of instruments that they're using and be able to tell, oh, that's definitely music from China. So it's definitely music from Iran, okay? So here we have an illustration of it. So here's my little map. Thank you, thank you, all right? So let's talk about some of the instruments that are uh, located in some of these countries. Uh, the rubab is from Afghanistan. It's part of the loop family. It has a neck bowl, and then it's Freddie string instruments and musicians actually pluck the strings. So they pluck them instead of strumming them. So, you know, from your guitar classes, it's a difference between the two. The oud is a Middle East instrument. It's a bowl-shaped body, and then it's fretted string instruments that are picked, and it actually has three to four sound holes. So we have a lot of fretted instruments, if you notice, as we're going um, to some of these other countries, quite a few fretted instruments are very popular. We have them here as well. We just consider them guitars. Um, a part of the guitar family. The Duduk is from Armenia. It's an aerophone, which is some type of wind instrument. Aerophone pertains to wind. Uh, so it's a woodwind. It has a double reed instrument. It's an ancient instrument, um, like a wooden flute. So, uh, be, you know, the modern flute, as we think about it, is made out of metal. Most of your students, when they see a flute, they automatically recognize it because it's silver. And those are the only flutes that they know about. But we have to remember that flutes were made out of wood initially. Sometimes we forget those things. It's like we just, we're caught up with modern things that we forget where these instruments came from. So we also want to remember that flutes 
and recorders and things of that sort started out as wood. And then the Dotara is from Bangladesh. It's a quarter phone and the, which is a string instrument. Uh, it has anywhere between two and five string um, uh, strings with it and it's covered in animal skin. Uh, another thing about membrano phones, if you remember that initially uh, drums as we know them are made out of animal skin. It was stretched over the top of the hollow wood or the hollow tree that they cut out and they stretched this animal skin over it. So um, that's where the word membrano comes from. It was a membrane and they stretched it over it. Uh, the Taiko is from Japan. Um, it's a membrano phone, which is part of the drum family. Anything that has a, um, a head on it is considered a membrano phone. Uh, some people play with the hands, other people play with sticks. The Taiko drums, you've seen them, they, they're hitting them with these large mallet type of um, sticks. So you've, uh, if you've watched anything with um, um, Japanese music, you've seen it. But definitely take a look at it on the internet to see what it looks like. Uh, it represents a wide range of instrument, percussion instruments, and uh, it's a traditional percussion instrument for Japan. So you will see it quite a bit. Uh, the piper or pipa, I'm not sure what you are, I think it's pipa, is the quarterphone and so strings. Now the pear-shaped body, member of the loop family, and then strings are plucked. So the sitar is from India, it's a quarterphone. It's a guitar-like shape and strings are plucked. And it's used in Hindu classical music, so you want to remember that definitely. Um, it's just not for modern music, it's for their classical music. And so is the tabla, I'm sorry I skipped this one. It's got tablets from India, membrane of foam. It's a two-hand drum that's prominent in, uh, it's a prominent instrument in the Hindu classical music. So let's think about how this may be presented on the exam. So I've given you a lot of different instruments um, thus far, and you want to think about, okay, well, she's giving us, you know, names of them, she's telling us what they're shaped like, she's encouraging us to go and look on computers at these things. So how does this relate to if I see this on exam? So say for instance, they play something, an instrument, and they say, well, what instrument do you hear? And these are your four options. You have two membrane phones, and then you have two quarter phones. The question is, if it sounds like it's a drum, these two, are out the window. Why? Because they're quarter phones. Their purpose is to play chords. They're string instruments. So you don't even have to think anymore. If you heard a drum or some type of percussion instrument, but in particular a drum, and they have instruments on here that may be an aerophone or a quarter phone, well, you don't even have to think about those. You just come over to this area. Okay, well, I heard a drum. Mm. Which one is it? So now, let me listen to the type of rhythms that they're playing. Let me listen to maybe some of the instruments that's accompanying these drums. Mm, well, that actually sounds like taco drums, taiko drums. Like, yeah, that doesn't necessarily sound like, it doesn't even sound like, first of all, it doesn't even sound like it's from India. That's the first thing, because it, it, Indian music doesn't sound like that. So I know it's this one. I know it's Tycho. You answer that question and you move on. Because they may give you two instruments from the same type of classification, which is a membrane phone, but they're not gonna sound the same the way that they're being played. Because first of all, they're shaped different. That's first. So ear training is gonna come in real handy with these questions. Oh, definitely ear training. You want to listen to music from around the world. You're not just gonna be able to always guess these things. That's why you have your world music history classes or a portion in your world history, um, I'm sorry, your music history classes that pertain to world music. The professor will not be able to give you all of the different musics from around the world. It's, it's impossible. Uh, that We expect you to continue on with your own research and listen to a variety of music. So if they've only touched on some things, it's only because they, they're running out of time. They don't, have a t they don't have enough time to cover absolutely everything, but they have given you enough information for you to continue and say, well, let me check out these instruments from this particular country or let me look more into this particular instrument. And so when they are presenting 
um, things on the exam and if it's sound based or if they just have the names if they say something about drums if these are your four choices then it's going to be one of these two so you had a 50 50 chance these 50 these are gone so you have a 50 50 chance between these two and then based on their description what is it well this is a two-hand drum these are usually not two-handed drum they usually play with some type of sticks but this one is a two-hand drum and then it's played in hindu classical music so if it starts to sound like um, Hindu classical musical, I mean Hindu classical music, that automatically takes Japan out of the equation. So here we are at Europe. Europe is broken down into four regions. So we have the East, countries like Hungary, uh, Hungary Poland, Romania. In the North, you have countries like Denmark, Norway, Scotland, United Kingdom. The South, Albania, Cyprus, Greece, Italy. And then the West, Austria, Belgium, France, Germany, and all those various countries. And this is where it's located on our world map. So let's talk about some of the instruments that are representative from those areas. The mandolin is from Italy, and it's a part of the lute family, which has a neck bow. Uh, it's a fretted instrument. And uh, musicians pluck the strings, metal strings are tuned in unison. Uh, the lyre is from Greece, it's a chordophone, another string instrument. It was in uh, 1400 BC, a small harp shaped instrument and musicians would um, strum the strings. And we've seen a lot of lyres in our history books during that time. Uh, you see people always angelic type of playing it or they, you've seen them, they, they're in every, music history book ever created, if they have any type of picture illustration in it, you've seen liars. Uh, the cantile is from Finland. It's a quarterphone and it's a zither harp, fretted string instrument, musicians pluck it, but it has up to 40 strings. Remember that, like a lot of these other instruments only have four strings, five strings, three strings, six strings, things like that. This one can go up to 40, so that's an important one to remember. And then the cimbalum, I think it's cimbalum. It's from Hungary, quarterphone, another string instrument. Uh, this is a large metal box. And when you see the picture of it, it sits up like a table. Uh, the musicians pluck the strings, so it's similar to a dulcimer. It's, it has chromatic sounds. So if you hear chromaticism in it, this might be a, a, an option to look for because a lot of things don't necessarily have a lot of chromaticism in it. So you want to keep this as an option if this type of question is presented to you. The baron is from Ireland. It's a membrane of foam. It's a handheld drum. Uh, the size is between 14 and 18 inches. Uh, the membrane is animal skin and it's made out of goat. And then the musicians play the hand in um, open side. Balaleka is from Russia. Balaleka, it sounds Russian. Okay, so it's a quarterphone, string instrument, lute family. Just remember what the lute looks like. We know what the lute looks like, so we know we have a general idea of what uh, the body looks like. The interesting thing about this one, it has a triangle shape. So you, when you take um, look it up, you'll see it's a, the body is triangle, which is something that we're not generally used to seeing. So just remember that, it's a triangle body for that one. And plays melodies and chords, of course, and then musicians pluck the strings. Uh, the Byburn is an aerophone from Lithuania. So we're wearing type instrument, single or double reed. Mouthpiece is not required, which is pretty cool because a lot of woodwind instruments that we play need some type of mouthpiece. And it looks like a modified wooden flute, so we know what wooden flutes are like. So the instrument can be played with or without the actual um, mouthpiece. And then of course the bagpipe, if you've seen any uh, parades in America that have people from Scotland in it, you know what a bagpipe is, you know what it sounds like. Um, it's considered an aerophone of woodwind instrument. The bag is on the side of the body for air. Uh, the pipe's hanging over the shoulder and has at least one drone, so it's one, one sound being continuous. So usually they're wearing some type of skirts. The men are wearing skirts while they're playing it. Um, then they had these high socks. So you've probably seen that before. Um, if you haven't seen it in parades, you've definitely seen them in movies.
Okay, Australia, and they say Oceania, which are the islands. You have the two major countries, which is Australia and New Zealand. They're actually not too far from each other. Um, you can get to either one of very quickly from the other. Uh, Melanesia, so we have Papua, Fiji, Solomon Islands, Micronesia, um, the Marshall Islands, Nara, and Polynesia, Samoa, Tonga. And that's over here. So as I said, Australia and New Zealand, as you can see, are very close to each other. And then all these little islands in this area are what represents the others. All right, the didgeridoo. You've seen that. It's this long pipe that you blow through here. And um, it's in Australia. So you see a lot of indigenous people um, playing it. Uh, long cylindrical body, played with vibrating lips. Um, it uses circular breathing. Um, if you don't know what circular breathing is, it is the, the process of taking in air while you're still blowing out air. So you'll see people, um, look that up, circular breathing if you've never seen it before. So they're breathing through their nose while they're still blowing out of their mouth, which is they're blowing the tone out of their mouth, but taking in new air. So they can play a tone for a long time. Um, it's really fascinating. I never learned how to do it, but People who know how to do it, it's awesome because you don't have to stop. You don't have to stop. You can just keep playing and playing and playing. You have the pan pipes, which are air phones, hollow bamboo tubes, and we know what bamboos look like. So they're tubes of different um, lengths, and then the pipes are connected together. Um, you've probably seen indigenous people, like they hold them right in their hands, so you have little bitty tubes. Well, just look it up. Um, but as soon as you see, you're like, oh yeah, I've seen those before. All right, so you blow at the top, blow inside of them, inside of each hole. The follow is from Samoa. Uh, Samoa. It's the idiophone, as we talked about idiophones, which are percussion instruments, which are non-pitched. It's actually a rolled up mat. So think about a, a mat or well, maybe a rug in your house, but it's really a mat. And they play them with sticks. Uh, they play a mat with sticks, so that's their uh, form of some type of percussion instrument and it accompanies their vocal singing. And then we have the class stick, which is from Australia. It's an idiophone, which is sticks. Um, the aborigine, uh, aborigines, uh, it's an aboriginal instrument, so the aborigines actually play these instruments. They're similar to claves, and we know what claves are from our uh, wind band world. Or even general music, we know what claves are. Uh, one thing about claves, if you don't know, if you've forgotten, uh, there's a male and a female. And so they actually have different pitches. One is higher than the other one. So uh, I just want to remind you of that while I was talking about it. And then the sticks strike each other. So those are our clap sticks. So what you're going to do is in your groups, well, first of all, you by yourself, uh, you want to listen more because you have to expose your ear to a variety of music from around the world. That our, our, our form is based on sound. We have to listen. We cannot just listen to the, the music we want to listen to. We have to listen to music from around the world because we are going to be presenting music to our students. And you want to find great representative pieces from a variety of countries as you are teaching your students in your classes in the future. So you want to find representative music from each region. You don't have to have 100 different pieces of music. You can go through each country, basically the main countries, and just pick music, maybe one or two from each one, and that's it. You probably can do, do one, but definitely uh, two. And you want to listen to it. You want to listen to what type of sounds are they creating? What type of sounds? Why is this representative of this particular region? Because that would help you when you hear it on the exam. Um, you want to take the time. I'll tell you about making playlists all the time. Um, make a playlist on your phone. So while you are washing dishes, uh, play music from all the different regions in Africa. Just make a playlist. While you're cooking, so say it takes you an hour to cook, eat and clean. Then have music from the continent of Africa playing. And try to guess what region is, um, is playing. And as you're cooking, and you hear something like, mm, I think that's from, that sounds like some music from Kenya. And then you run over to your iPad and you look up, 
that got it right, and you get go back to starting whatever you were starting. It's just that simple. The more you hear it, the easier it is for you to identify it. It becomes more familiar to your ear. So then on the exam, if they play something, they're not going to play what you were listening to, but you might luck up and get one of those pieces that they played. But if they play something like, that sounds just like the music I was listening to from the, from the Sudan or from Kenya or whatever. Okay, if one of those choices are on the, um, on the exam, guess what? That's a softball to you. But it's only a softball because you have exposed your ears to those different sounds. So it's going to take some time. That's why you want to make the playlist. Then you want to share your playlist with the people in your group. So say that you have five people in your group that's studying. Uh, that's even better. Now you can have, um, what do they call them, some type of game. The person who uh, gets all of them right, we buy them a Coke or whatever you want to get. All right, so then you done like, back in the day when I was in school, it was called drop the needle. Drop the needle meant that you could drop it anywhere on the recording and you would have to be able to tell the composer, the region in, that it was from, the time period, what type of music it is. So this is not drop the needle, but you can scroll right to the middle of the music and start playing something play it for like a minute and have your friends try to figure out what it is and make a list. And then after it, discuss it. Discuss it, well, why did you think it was from Japan versus India? Well, this is what I heard. I heard blah, 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 blah. And then you're like, oh, you know what? I didn't even pay attention to that. Oh, you got me. So like things like that is like when you are able to study with other people, I, I cannot preach this enough. They will help you if you study with other people. Five brains are always better than one. And so when you're doing this type of study and you're doing this type of practicing, you can have this type of drop the needle type of thing that's going on. And you all can say, well, why did you think that was that? Okay, well, how did you come up with that answer? And based on that, make sure you bring food, you know, because, you know, it helps us to think food and have some drinks and things like that. Regular drinks, Coke, stuff like that. Um, and just sit around and discuss the music. Discuss what you hear and why you think it is a part of this region. What instruments did you hear that told you, definitely, this is from Japan, definitely, this is from Colombia. What did you hear? So and like if you can trivia. Yeah, just sound trivia, music trivia. Basically, you make it into a music trivia. Friday nights we get together. It's music history time. It's music trivia time. And you hang out to, with each other for two hours and you do this type of thing. And if you do this over a semester, if you have an hour a semester to prepare for it, you'll be well prepared for it by the end of the semester. So you gotta listen and then jot down the characteristic sounds. So if you are cooking and like, mm, that's an interesting sound, I believe is what it is, just jot these things down. Now remember, I know you remember this from your education classes, the reason we want you to write things down is because it's a connection between your hand and your brain. Uh, one of the things I don't allow my students to do in my classes is type on their computers. I, I know. It's like with Dr. Gladden, it's so much easier to type, but it's, that, it's not that connection. Um, that's why we have you write music instead of you using the notation software. The first thing is always to have you write it because your brain has to figure out, okay, is it on this line? Is, you know, it goes through this whole process and you're more likely to remember it if you just write it down. So as you make your playlist, you wanna write these things down. So those pertain to world music. Sorry I don't have any examples for you, but all these streaming services have all these examples. Your music professors have these examples. The internet have these examples. You just have to search for them and you have to make a playlist of this music. Once you do that, make the time to listen to this music. Once you listen to it, you, it first of all, it's gonna to start to grow on you, and then second of all, you're gonna to start to be able to identify a lot of the sounds that, it, that are indicative of those different countries.